Taurus in the 10th house, Taurus mid heavens. Shout out to all my Leo risings in the building, all right? Now, Venus has rulership over this 10th house. Venus themes are gonna be very strong in your 10th house. What is your 10th house? This is the house, the highest point of your chart that has a huge influence on your natural reputation, things you may have gained notoriety for in your life, your social status, how you navigate career experiences. So regardless of what planets and signs we have in this house and where the ruler is at, so for all my Leo risings, where Venus in this 10th house is at, or excuse me, where Venus that rules this 10th house is at. That's the most important thing to understand about any house. Where's the ruler? Then we could get into the planets in the house and other planets that are hitting this house in a square, in the opposition, in a trine. Then we could get into all of that good stuff. But first, that's the foundation. Where's the ruler? All right. Think about your parents, which were the rulers of the household you lived in. Depending on where they worked at, their career, that had a huge influence on the energy in the house at times. All right? So that's what's going on with the ruler. Okay? If the ruler is dealing with stressful energies in the environment, that's going to come to the 10th house. If Venus is in this area dealing with a lot of opportunistic energies, that trickles into the 10th house. So we need to know where that ruler is at, okay? Because regardless of what I say about careers, right? Regardless of what I say about career influences for 10th house um, videos or whatnot, a lot, of, a lot of that shit can go out the window depending on where the ruler is at. A lot of these things where we talk about career influences in the mid heaven, if you're not talking about the ruler, you're only going to really be grasping on, you're going to, you're going to be grasping on natural influences in the house. So it's not saying that you're not accurate. All right. But when we get into the ruler, now we see the combination of how the natural energies in that house play into where the ruler is at. So with all that being said, guys, all right, all my Taurus is in the 10th house. Please know where Venus is at because that's the house that's going to have a huge influence on your career. That house is going to always be providing direction, answers, solutions for things you should be active with in career. All right. Now, Venus deals with our values. The Taurus constellation itself, right? We're dealing with that Venus energy, that fixed earth energy. We're dealing with the sense of value, self-esteem, self-worth, steadiness, building, patience, right? We know Venus is dealing with that beauty, with that charm, with that elegance. So off rip, these individuals, these are, we're talking about Leo Risings right now. We're talking about Leo Risings right now. So when it gets into the 10th house, it, it's very likely for them to deal with these Venus-like themes in career. Being in position to express a value, represent a value, a lot of tar, a lot of Leo risings, having Taurus in the tenth house, you're gonna, while you navigate career experiences, a lot of you guys may fall into things that help you build stability. Once again, Taurus is the money sign. All right, let's not forget that. So we're talking about the money sign in a career house. So the potential here gets a little crazy. All right, right. So, but we got the money sign in the tenth house. But the sign dealing with values, right? Understand that. Every time we talk about money with Taurus, we got to start with the values. Whenever you invest in the values, then we could get to the stability and all that good stuff, all right? But the foundation is always the value, right? You got a, you got a business, you got a vision, you got an aspiration. It starts with the value you see in yourself. And then we, we, could, we could definitely manifest some bread out of that. We could definitely manifest some monetary gains out of that. But that's what the Taurus constellation is teaching us in a whole, okay? And when we look at Taurus in the 10th house, that sense of value, regardless of what you do in career, a lot of you Leo Risings out there manifest situations where, yeah, you be make, you, you making a lot of bread at that job. You, you eating good at that job. You eating good with this hustle that might have even fell on your lap. Venus rulership in the 10th house. Opportunities, support, love. Attractive energy in the 10th house. Charming energy in the 10th house. Yeah, y'all Leo Rises get a lot of opportunities that fall in y'all lap in career. Y'all think the lucky Libra don't know? So... With all that being said, y'all could fall into these situations, but because, because wherever Taurus is at in our natal chart, that's going to be a huge area that has a lot to do with uh, navigating the frequency of our self-esteem and developing our value system, right? Wherever Taurus is at in our chart, wherever Venus is at in our chart, and wherever uh, what, what's going on in our second house, these, these are the main three areas that have a lot to do with one's self-esteem, including moon, including... In, 
I mean, the moon and sun, are, the luminaries is always going to have to deal with everything. So the ship, the Mars got to deal with moon and sun, get some of that too. Venus deal with moon and sun, every moon and sun get a piece of everything. So, all right. But when it comes into self-esteem, that Taurus house and where Venus is at. All right. And second house influences. So this person, you know, being in that position where they're making money, this and the third, it comes to a point because you got Taurus in the 10th house, a lot of Leo rising, you start to feel, you can start feeling a little spiritually out of alignment in career because what you're doing for career doesn't really match up with something that you truly value, whether it's an ideology, whether it's a skill, whether it's something you want to teach, whether it's an experience, whether it's a talent, whether it's a gift that you have. So these are some of the uh some of the most significant ex things to anticipate with Taurus in that 10th house when you feel that intuition kicking in about you being in an environment in career where you don't feel valued appreciated or you don't get to pour into your values uh through career you, through utilizing your career environment as an outlet that's where there's going to be a sense of unfulfillment here having Taurus in the 10th house all right but I say all of this to say that. That's why I teased you guys about the Venus opportunities you guys run into because sometimes you guys can let these opportunities go over your head. And it be like that sometimes with planets that like to, you know, drop blessings here and there. All right. We know we low key don't use that word blessings, do your research, but for context, you know, we, we will use that for now. But, you know, Venus has her way of dropping some positive opportunities, positive people, places, and things in our life, right? You know, we got that support energy. So if you're able to invest into uh, your values and pour positive energy into your Venus placement, then you can attract, you can attract that support system through people, places, and things, opportunities, and whatnot. So yeah, this, this Leo Risings, you guys have to make sure you don't fall too content in the 10th house which is another, we can say, Achilles heel for this placement. Too content in the 10,000. You know, Taurus, Taurus uh, could fall in the extremes of being lazy and a hard worker. You got some Tauruses out there with eight jobs. You got some Tauruses out there that can't, won't lift a finger. So that whole discontent shit, you can't do that here, Taurus. I mean, Leo rises, or you don't want to, you don't want to fall into that cycle here. What planet is debilitated in Taurus? Mars. Mars is actually the exaltation here. So what does that say? That says Leo risings, you guys have to have some sense of intention, some sense of drive in your 10th house. You cannot be too content or gassed up with your, with the acknowledgement that you're capable here. You can't be too gassed up with the acknowledgement that you can do something, that you do have a positive reputation for something because you already got the Leo personality, but a lot of Leo risings don't come off the way you would think Leo comes off. Remember, this is the rising sign. So this is the life path of living what the Leo sun or moon, uh, you know, naturally projects. You're living the life path of it. The Leo sun moon may is going to naturally exert some of this energy that you see when it comes into leos or whatnot this and the third the expressive owning the room right the vibrance in their appearance w wanting the attention demanding the attention manipulating the attention the attention gurus all that leo energy but when we get into leo risings you get the you get some shy ass leo risings some introverted ass leo risings but best believe when we get into the travels of the first to the fourth to the seventh to the tenth house Oh, in, in, in enough time, you go, you may not be able to tell the Leo rising from the Leo sun and moon because the Leo rising will go through experiences that that forces it to own its lioness, to, to own the lion, to own the sun, to own the spotlight. So when we get into Taurus in the 10th house, this is part of that life path, being able to own your values, right? Being able to own your values through career, through your social status, through a sense of branding, to be able to invest in that. We know the 10th house deals with time and patience. This is the construction house. Have y'all ever built anything in career overnight? 
I, I, I don't know anybody that has something, something, you know, sufficient, effective, lasting to last over time. I ain't talking about running, hitting the lick, getting some bread overnight. No scamming should know something sturdy, foundational, you know, something that gives legacy vibes. Is anything like that ever built the fuck overnight? Hell the fuck no. Nah. That's why the 10th house is ruled by Saturn. Because everything takes time here. Sometimes in career, we got to break some shit down to build a new platform. All right. So when we get the sign of Taurus here that rules, that is already dealing with patience and steadiness, this Leo rising, you guys have to make sure that you're constantly investing into what you feel like, where you feel like your value lays in career and being able to be seen for that shit. Being able to be seen for it. All right. A lot of you guys... A lot of you guys will manifest situations in, in career where you guys are always like in some type of shape form, the glue for things. When it comes to Taurus energy, Taurus energy is very reliable, it's sturdy, it's stable, it's secure, okay? People with heavy Taurus placements, when they don't feel like they have those attributes in their life, when they don't feel secure, steady, stable, that's a foot, that's a stressed Taurus, frustrated Taurus. Taurus might clap you, say the wrong thing to their ass. Don't be fucking that Taurus coffee up in the morning and shit. You know how they are with their five senses and shit. Taurus go upside your motherfucking head, fucking up coffee orders and shit. Bitch, I said oat milk. All right. So uh, when it comes into uh, the, 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 the theme of patience and time, Leo Risings, this is, this is, this is important. This is important because a lot of Leo Risings... You know, your, what your first house does is manifest sunlight, manifest attention, because it is the uh, ruler. But you have to learn, a lot of your life path is about learning how to manipulate sun energy, learn the significance of sun energy, being able to understand when to provide it for others, when to receive it, when to detract, detract from it. These, your, this is your life path, right? And um, so you may already get some type of uh, you know, notoriety just for things in your personal life and they could trickle into the 10th house with Taurus here, right? You start, you start to be able to manifest some opportunities to stabilize yourself through a, through a Leo talent, all right? So basically what I'm trying to say, the motherfuckers in the 10th house, Leo rises, some people be, the, be believing in y'all more than y'all believe in yourselves. Sometimes it takes the 10th house with Taurus there Venus, support, self-esteem. Sometimes this house will use a person, place, or theme, or experience to get the Leo rising in the first house that may not know its sunlight the way the Leo sun is lost in their fucking sunlight and the way the Leo moon needs the sunlight. The Leo rising may learn through the 10th house through different various support systems, different experiences that, whether they're positive or negative, that trigger this Leo rising to look like, yo, I'm worth this. My talents, my awareness, my vision, my creativity, th this is worth something. And I can use this to build. I don't have to get lost in the attention it may bring, right? The gossip around it, how people may perceive me. I just know I'm acknowledging what can be seen from me, what can I use to build, and what I need to learn how to value. So for all my Leo Risings out there that be questioning things about themselves, but you constantly are hearing that you may that you you should you should do this you should do that you'll be good looking at you, you you could be seen for this you could be seen for that and you question you question yourself if you can be seen for these things it's part of your life path you have to learn to value that you have to learn to value that all right um so yeah yes all my leo sons and all my leo rises out there let me get a little roar real quick Roar, all right. So to let me know y'all with me, type roar in the comments if you're still with me. If you still if, if you're still here right now, all right. Uh, and don't give me no weak ass roar. Put, put, get that motherfucking caps locks. Throw some explanation points on that motherfucker. All right. So boom, Venus themes, right? Venus themes. Once again, beauty, charm, attractiveness appealing, pleasant energies. You guys naturally radiate these things when you're in the 10th house. When you're in a position of being on the stage, when you're in situations where you can be seen, maybe it's a social environment, right? A lot of you guys, the, 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 the Venus hovering over that 10th house, you guys manifest, you, you get a job at this place, 
and naturally move up quick because of your fucking personality, because of your relatability, because of your cooperativeness. So Venus be looking out for y'all in that 10th house like that. All right. But what happens once Venus finds a cubicle, a department, an office, you know, a gig, a hustle that is like, okay, this is comfortable enough for me. I know I can strive for more. I know there's more values I want to invest in this, that, now, nah, but this brings all the pleasures I need. This is where the, con this is where Venus contentness kicks in. Don't know if contentness is a real word, but we gon' y'all know how it go. We're going to act like that motherfucker word. But that's, that's where the energy, the content energy derives from. You know, Venus can get comfortable where she's at. Leo Rising, that's what we don't want to do. Y'all too goddamn brilliant for that, right? All right, then. So we're not doing that uh, in the 10th house. And um, I believe a lot of you guys will conquer, will conquer self-esteem issues by making sure you don't, uh, you know, put your career pursuits on the back burner. Once again, you know, you, you're in this workspace, work environment that you don't feel like your potential is being, you know, don't feel like it's an environment where your potential feel like it, it can excel. Uh, these are these are going to be moments in your life where you got to have calculated risk, you know, because spiritually, this is where a lot of your self value, a lot of situations with issues with your self esteem won't be fixed or I don't want to even use the word fixed, but won't elevate, won't be healed, won't progress, won't be, you know, self understood. Like these is hard to find these things when it, when Taurus in the 10th house is you're constantly putting ceilings on what values and you know, what could be built here. Right. Um, and once again, Leo Rodgers, you have, you, have, you have better than that. You got too talented for that. Okay. A lot of you guys, once again, a lot of you guys manifest situations in, in the career space where you just manifest being the glue. You, the Taurus energy, once again, reliable, stable. So you come into a work environment, it was scattered, unorganized before you got there in some type of shape or form. You brought some more harmony in there. You brought some more stability. You brought an energy for people wanting to be more harmonious in there in some type of shape or form. You probably made a couple more people smile up in there a little bit in some type of shape or form. You know, your charisma, your charm in different type of ways. You know, Leo Rise be having that little subtle, shy-ass charm. They charm and shit. They motherfuckers know they look good and shit, but motherfuckers be mad modest and shit. Like, stop, stop you little, come on, stop playing, Leo Rising. Like, stop playing. Own that shit. Own that shit. <laughs> That's why I be talking. I, I know I didn't spoke to a lot of Leo Rising. Like, I know I don't, but I don't, I'm a Leo Rising, but I don't really feel like I got them Leo characteristics because y'all keep put making, thinking the Rising is the sun and the sun is the moon and they're, they're just, we gonna learn that those are different things. We're going to learn those are different things. Okay. So, yeah. Hey, don't let that shit go over your head, Leo Rise. You got a certain sense of charm. You know, you, you know you're very likable in your work environments, in social spaces. Use that shit. It's the lucky Libra telling you that motherfucker right now. You got Venus falling to a house. Uh, 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 Venus energies fall into a house that's dealing with presentation. They're already going to have somewhat of a positive aura in that area. You know? So, uh, if you move like you have some value, you best believe motherfuckers is going to, you know, invest, support, uplift that. But how hard is that so hard to do if you're not the starter, the starter of that? If you're not building a foundation, leading the way for other people to pour into your values, you, your values could be a human. You could have a humanitarian value. Well, it's Venus in the twelfth house, so shit could get real artsy here. A lot, you guys could get real artsy, poetic. You know, whether it's music, whether it's fashion, everything dealing that anything you could think of that under the themes of beauty it was hair, fashion, styling, uh, all of that shit, all of them Venus themes, them type of aesthetics and all of that, throw, throw all of that in there, all right? But once again, we need, to know, we need to know where Venus is at, though. Once again, us knowing where Venus is at, if you have Taurus in the 10th house, you, you need to understand how your reputation is connected to that house. The more you're able to, you know, be seen for that, attach that, brand that within your 10th house, you know, plans, your, how you navigate career, the more you can create portals and natural opportunities for things to blossom. 
because you may already be seen for that area in the first place. That may already be your social status. So you might as well uh, expand that as much as possible and see how you can branch off that, do different things uh, in different chapters of your life. But, you know, we got to use what the fuck we brought here first. Now, uh, so yeah, so like you can have somebody, Taurus in the 10th house, whatever, let's say, you know, they into music, let's say because Venus is in the 10th house, Taurus is the 10th house, you know, the Leo personality is real creative beings here. So, uh, let's say, you know, um, they're into music. If Venus is in the fourth, if this person is rapping about things, you know, rapping or singing about things, uh, their subconscious would impact their feelings and emotions, things that are thought provoking, you know, touch the emotions, uh, things dealing with connectivity, intimacy, you know, uh, you know, close knit relationships, you know, more vibey. I don't even say vibey music. It don't have to be vibey music, but things that come with some more vibes, though, more vibrations It's not just, you know, a one pace thing or whatnot you can feel the music more has more of a lesson maybe it's more philosophical this person music would you know connect more be able to would would have be able to ugh, would have an easier time branding or advertising these things more because he's sprinkling that fourth house energy all up in the art so it doesn't really matter which one of these artistic themes you may fall into with Taurus in the 10th house. But if you know the ruler, if you could combine these things and you got planets in your 10th house, understanding you're also seen for those planets as well, right? You got Mercury in the 10th house. You're seen for your intellect and the way you think a lot of times within your career space. You know, you got Jupiter in the 10th house. You're seen for your, your ability to, you know, develop philosophies, be more of a wiser interpreter of things in that area in some type of shape or form, bring some sense of expansion, right? Some knowledge and insight into that area, more of a harmonious, uplifting, optimistic uh, vibration into that area. So uh, if any planet in your 10th house, you need to know these are things you're naturally seen for at times with your reputation and things that can also, you know, help, uh, energies blossom within your career because you're already seen for these things right um so we don't want to block lessons to develop self-esteem and our true values by blocking career pursuits basically all right well all that being said you know that sense of attractiveness appealingness charm or natural opportunity from sense of relatability being a people's person you know, in um in this area, your sense of cooperativeness that with Taurus here, these things can manifest a lot of opportunities here. It can manifest a lot of opportunities here. So you wanna own that reputation. You wanna own that. A lot of you guys have reputations for just being the positive person, having to be in this 10th house. People may not even really know what you're into, but maybe you have a mutual friend and every time you have a friend and, uh, you know, you know somebody through them and every time that other person sees you, they may not even know much about you yet, but that's the vibe. That's the what they picked up on from you in the 10th house, you know, sun ruling the first house, Venus ruling the 10th, you know, may have the sun in the, you know, real, uh, regardless of where the sun is at, this time the third, you know, the, the, just the, the, you being a Leo rising, these type of influences and rulers, you can give off that vibe a lot of time. People just uh, see you as a harmonious vibe, you know? So those are energies that can take people places at times, you know, especially in the crazy and what can seem like ugly world we live in at times, you know, that is, that energy is valued. Um... Now, you know, Taurus, money sign, deal with security and stability. So when you got Taurus in the 10th house, uh, a lot of you guys also fall into positions where, you know, things dealing with finances and management of finances and security and stability can be major themes in career, within your career pursuits. You know, uh, understanding how to budget, manage, and understand what's important when maybe you may need to budget and invest into things in the 10th house. You may, that may, you may, a lot of you guys may come across that, you know, bridge here where it may be a superficial value, something that don't really mean that much or something. And then maybe a budget or something you want to invest into for a 10th house aspiration, something you want to build. And you have to, you know, have the discipline to be able to make these decisions here. And then, you know, if you fall into the cycle of pouring value into the things that you don't that aren't needs, you know, aren't things that you truly aspire and want to build or things you want to build in like in career, 
you know, you could find yourself constantly seeing how you're setting back these things because of that, you know, and that's a that's a cycle that could be a little stressful uh, having those constant repetitive realizations like, damn, I've been had the money to do the standard third. I've been had the money to get the LLC. I've been had the money to go to the studio. I've been had the money like whatever. But I keep, keep going here. Keep going there. Or resources in general, resources in general. OK, um, now understanding Venus bringing a sense of love and support here. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I, Leo risings at times you got to have drive because you guys can get content on feeling like there's always going to be something to bring some type of support, you know, or aiding hand within navigating career experiences. And you cannot have them and it's not healthy to develop a mentality like that when it comes into building stability and security. You want to have something that you personally can stand on without having to reach outside of yourself. And um, so when it comes into Venus bringing that support and whatnot. There's going to be times here that Tars ride, uh, Tars rising, Leo rising, Tars in the 10th house. You guys are going to have to learn when not to give your support, when to receive support. Like you got to be wise in that way at times. Sometimes in the 10th house, you can make decisions, career decisions. It could be business partnership decisions or whatnot. But in whatever type of way, your sense of wanting to cooperate, help build, pour into others at times can leave you drained from something you personally had going on in the 10th house. You know, uh, that the people wanting to lean on your resources, your experience, credentials, whatever it may be in the 10th house without appreciation, right? Without uh, acknowledgement of value in what you're doing or whatnot. These are things you're gonna have to see here so you don't allow yourself to get taken advantage in the 10th house, you know, in different scenarios like that. So support, under, once again, understanding when it's reasonable for you to support others, you know, accept support, reject support, understanding other people's agendas and intentions here. You know, uh, and then once again, the square houses, you know, we spoke a lot about the first and the first in the uh, Leo rising, you know, the, this the 10th house, Taurus in the 10th house helps Leo rising to understand how to value how they're seen. Fourth house, Scorpio is here. So a lot of the time, the fourth house may go through certain uh, crisis like moments, intense moments, emotional, impactful moments. Uh, power and controlling situations uh, that build as a motivator, you know, to, to, to stand on a value system within the 10th house. It could be something this person, this Taurus person truly values that's not reflected in the fourth, right? It's not reflected in the fourth. And that can, you, you need to use that as a positive motivator, right? To stand on what is it that you want to be seen for. You don't want to pull, you don't like, you may have to play a lot of bigger person situations in this area. I've spoke about how the Leo Rising's light is not reflected in the home environment at times with Scorpio here. And that leads into uh, unlocking, you know, real deep outlooks on support, emotional connections, relationships. Okay, when you have a plant, when you have that type of uh, influence with Scorpio in the fourth house, because yes, it could bring that dark that dark influence of these transformations energy not being you know acknowledged reflected supported but at the same time you got scorpio which is a deep psychological sign in the fourth house so there's a lot of emotional awareness that's developed through these experiences and we just need to make sure that when it comes into the opposite axis with taurus in the 10th house that builds the value and that's utilized as a motivator in the 10th house okay and not so much as negative energy that's just held in your fourth that energy is going to have to be released, released and the square houses need to help with that. Okay. The square houses are going to help with that. And then when we got Aquarius in the seventh house, okay, we got that Taurus Aquarius square. So a lot of times I believe Aquarius in the seventh house is a good way for, uh, because Aquarius is a very networking type of influence. But at the same time, if you realize Leo Risings, you know, they're very, they, they can be very sociable, relatable beings, but they can also be very picky about who they choose to, to, to <laughs> Who to spend their time with at the same time? Okay, they got Aquarius in the seventh house. So what happens here is uh, this house, Aquarius in the seventh, opens up a lot of 
uh, it creates a lot of experiences that can open up perspectives for the Leo rising and understand like, okay, if I network, shake and bake, express, connect, relate myself some more, it'll help bring some opportunity, light, energy towards things that I value my 10th house. These could potentially be relationships that can help me build. These could potentially be relationships in some type of shape or form that, you know, can help connect and relate to what I've got going on in the 10th house. But in some type of shape or form, that's usually what Aquarius is teaching Taurus, how to relate, you know, uh, that energy in some type of shape or form. And then on top of that, with Aquarius in the seventh house, who knows what type of people Leo Rises is always meeting and bumping into, dating, connecting with, doing business with in their life. These are going to be some real individual, free-spirited, free-thinking, rebellious, you know, uh, abstract thinking type individuals. So this damn near creates influences to motivate the Taurus, the Taurus and the 10th house individual to be like, yo, I didn't see too much examples of people standing on their individuality and what, how they believe in themselves and their thoughts and ideologies for me not to stand in my values. So it's almost a motivator in that sense as well. Okay. So, uh, listen, man, uh, Leo Rises, love ya. Leo Rises, love ya. Okay. The main things here, I, I believe I want y'all to take away from this is making sure uh, you utilize, you know, the things that you already know, because sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we really be aware, unaware of things that we're good at. But when it comes to the things that you can at least acknowledge to self that you know you're good at, talented that, you know, can possibly be used in a creative way to help expand your life in whatever way, you know, um, you have to you don't overlook at outlets or ideas and plans of how to funnel that through your 10th your house. All right. So that's one uh, don't allow uh, your experiences of developing your self-esteem and true value within self. Don't allow these things to be blocked by negating 10th house experiences. Experiment. Go start that. Go do that. Allow yourself to go through them experiences and, you know, start to learn how it feels to be appreciated here. You know, start to learn how it feels like to, you know, pour into a community, a group, an aspiration, or a, a, a business endeavor, this, that, and the third, and see some fruits of your labor, see people giving you recognition, value, and appreciating the service you bring. You need that. You need to experience that, Leo Rising. You need to experience that. It makes you own your sunlight more. It makes you own your sunlight more. Okay? And obviously, there needs to be, once again, a sense of tech, strategy, and steadiness here. That's the Taurus way. Okay, make sure that, you know, when you manifest situations in your life where you feel like you've been too content and now you're just going super opposite, super extreme, uh, head first into what you're doing in the 10th house that you got to notice the moments too to, to help self pace. All right. It, within them chapters as well. But sometimes we need them periods in our life that we do get burnt out real quick just to be like, God damn, fuck it. At least I can sit on my ass from being burnt out than not doing shit. All right. But let me regroup, spiritually regroup and get back on business, okay? But that's usually how sometimes we got to learn shit at times, you know? Um, but yeah, that's what we got going on for the most part. I think there was something I realized looking at celebrities. You know, I, uh, sometimes I, I, I used to, you know, just look at celebrities uh, with placements just to give an example. And I think when I looked up, I, I'd seen that it was so much of these celebrities that had a strong sense of charm or whatnot in the 10th house, people's charismatic, you know? So we got, we got Donald Trump. I would say he's one of the more, I would say he is one of the more charismatic presidents that we've had, if you really think about it. He's one of the more entertaining presidents that we have, but okay, whatever. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, okay, so when you get into the themes of beauty, charm, right? Uh, Johnny Depp, Selena Gomez, uh, Drake, Okay, Justin Timberlake, you know, and even, you know, when I look at Drake, I imagine how much things in career he's the glue to hold up. Justin Timberlake, you know, shit, once he went solo, a whole group broke apart. So look what he was holding up. <laughs> And that might have been a challenge for him at that time, whether he was pushed to go solo, whether whatever, you know, that may have been a major transition and that may have felt in, fall, fell into the theme of having to invest in, into a true value. Who knows? I mean, I, mean, I could do my research, there's probably information on it, but who knows if he probably wanted to go solo for a minute way before he went solo, all different type of shit like that. And, you know, he had to get over that hump or shit like that, you know. Then again, you know, I believe they were really young at that time and then Hollywood is a crazy place anyway, so. Um, 
Chris Brown. <laughs> okay, Demi Lovato. Robert Downey Jr. Okay. So, some real beautiful women on this list. Okay. Tina Turner, Muhammad Ali. Talk about standing on your values in your 10th house. I ain't going to no Viet Cong. Viet Cong ain't do nothing to me. I know my impression. My impressions don't be hitting all the time, y'all. Not all the time. Tina Turner, what's love got to do? Even her song got some. Even her songs got some motherfucking Venus value themes hitting that shit, dealing with self-esteem and shit. Look at Tina Turner. Was her self-esteem not projected? Her self-esteem <laughs> energy is not projected through it. If you think about Tina Turner, okay, Tina Turner boom, then think about her 10th house. All right, if you think about Tina Turner, and when you think about 10th house, what she's known for, like, her self-esteem issues and everything, dealing with, like, that is as popular as the music. It go hand in hand, goddamn. Like, it go hand in hand. So, uh, in a second hand emotion. But that's what we got going on, y'all. Shout out to my Leo Rise. I love you. I just like I love everybody else. All right. And, um, uh, y'all already know the vibes, man. Leave a comment. Any, any, uh, forms of confirmation, questions, relatability, throw it all up in there. Y'all leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. All right, y'all. Tap in my website. If you want to connect with the Lucky Libra? Tap into my Patreon if you want to dive deeper. I'm out of here. Peace.